Okay, so it's a nuance within this understanding, first of all, that humans develop. Now, you wouldn't think that would be a provocative comment, but in so much of the green meme postmodern circles, spiritual communities, it's a provocative comment. Humans develop. Hierarchically, ooh, that one stings, right? You mean, aren't we all the same? Aren't we all we equal? And being all equal has nothing to do with how one has developed, right? We can still extend equal love, equal rights, equal worth, but the reality of it is humans develop, just like children develop. Nobody argues that, right? At a certain point, a child learns how to say a word, but they can't say a paragraph the first time they learn a word. But saying a word always comes before the ability to have the cognition to form a paragraph. In fact, it goes, first they have to learn words, then they can learn a sentence, then they can learn a paragraph. There's a hierarchical unfolding to how that works. And they go from <laughs> certain pre-operational thought to concrete operational thought to formal operational thought. They develop, their minds develop through stages. And then somehow we decide we get to adulthood and there's no more development. And the reality is there's usually not. But that doesn't mean that's the way it has to be. And so develop, adults can continue to develop. And that's Epoch 6 is a developmental, that's the next potential emerging stage of human evolution, the evolution of consciousness that has gone through several evolutions. And we go through traditional, modern, and postmodern, and then most development gets arrested because in the West a person can develop postmodern consciousness by the time they're 25 years old, although I'm really starting to question that. I think we can signal the code of postmodern consciousness and postmodern culture, but I think the number of people that have really grown into it are a lot less than a lot of developmentalists think, but that's another story. And so these stages of development are hidden meaning making maps that we process the world from. And we, healthy development is envelopment. So we should have all of these stages that it took a culture a hundred thousand years to evolve through from archaic to magic to mythic to rational to postmodern took a hundred thousand years for these cultures for these groups of individuals at the leading edge to bust out of magical thinking into mythic literal and 10,000 years for these gr groups of leading edge to bust out of mythic literal into rational mental a la the renaissance and western enlightenment and then it took hundreds of years for groups at the leading edge to burst out of this rational mental into this postmodern multicultural pluralistic consciousness and now because each of those became stable structures there's like a morphic field there's a gravitational pull and you're born freaking lucky you're born being able to attain postmodern consciousness by the time you're 25 years old because all of these leading edge 
avant-garde that did the work, that explored new territory for a hundred thousand years, created these next waves of human evolution and stabilized them in ways that now when you're born, it's like it's part of your DNA. It's there to unfold up to Epoch 5. Beyond that, there's not a lot of gravitational pull. There's not a lot of morphic resonance. There's not anything really stabilized up there. And I'm proposing we are that avant-garde. We are those Renaissance thinkers at, in Florence, Italy, that started to unlock another dimension of reality and create new art forms and new political systems and new educational systems and develop rational ways to look at the world that could bear weight on the mythic ways of lo looking at the world below them. And so we have within us now, if we've grown to postmodernity, we should have healthy versions because development is envelopment. You shouldn't transcend the one before and then deny it or repress it or hate it. And unfortunately, that's what happens in most postmodern culture. You have to reach back down and include it because it is a building block of your mind. And without it, your mind collapses. And that's what's happening in postmodern culture. And so each of these stages, and we can talk about the top three now because they represent about 90 plus percent of Western culture, the traditional, the modern, and the postmodern. The last three major stages of evolution. Traditional, modern, and postmodern. And most of us source our primary values out of this leading as postmodern. The champion of postmodernity was Martin Luther King, the champion of that movement into inclusivity, multiculturalism, pluralism. Martin Luther King is a figure that we can point to because the 1960s is when that really became a stable structure. And so the first thing to understand is that all of these stages of development have healthy representations and unhealthy representations. And they all have the potential for pathology. And the pathology becomes the extreme of what it was that the stage was primarily identified by. And each of these stages becomes more inclusive. It's a pattern to evolution. The evolution of consciousness is it's becoming more open and inclusive and including more <coughs> perspectives. At the traditional stage of development, the tendency is towards ethnocentrism. Now that's a dirty word today, but before the mythic literal stage came into birth, it was very difficult for most people to take the perspective of anyone because it was egocentric, not ethnocentric. Egocentric means it's all about me. Tamika, if I want your notebook, I am bigger and stronger and I will take it by force if I need to because I don't care about you or your rights or if you want it or you don't. But then something truly remarkable happened. The ability to take another perspective opened up in consciousness of a significant minority of people. And they started to be able to share interiority with other people that were like them. Key word, like them. Thus ethnocentric. I can take your perspective if you are like me, if you believe in my God, if you live in my nation, if you have my skin color. All right. 
But understand, that's a huge progression of evolution from I don't care if you believe in my religion or have my skin color. If I want your notebook, I will beat you over the head and take it because it's about me. I can't feel your insides. I can't resonate with who you are. If I can't take your perspective, I can't love you. Understand this one. And so, hallmarks of that stage of development was that it was very authoritarian of the ethnocentric, of the traditional stage, which is still a major stage of, of development operating in Western culture. And it's a lot large, it represents about 70% of the rest of the world. The most dominant <laughs> stage in the world that people source their meaning through. In Western culture, it's about 30%, probably somewhere in there. And so this traditional stage tends towards ethnocentrism, but it also has an appreciation for hierarchy, for personal responsibility, for authority, for accountability, for rules. One of the things, in fact, it's called by some developmentalists is the law and order stage of development. And it tends towards ethnocentric relationships and when the cultures were primarily egocentric, that was a huge evolution. That was a good thing. That was a beautiful emergence. But when cultures then started moving into modernity, guess what happened? Another perspective became unlocked. This is why we also have to be really careful about revisionist history. Because we're filtering it through our lens. They did not have the same filter apparatus. Once modernity burst onto the scene with the Renaissance and the Western Enlightenment, we started to be t able to take a third perspective. It's not just about me. It's not just about you if you believe in the Christian God and you're white, I can care for you, right? Because I can take your perspective because you're like me and I can extend you love, ungodly amounts of love, maybe even more love than I can extend myself. I can care for you so deeply, right? But I can hate you because your skin is darker than me. That's just ethnocentric consciousness. So here's one thing to realize. There are now positives in that stage of development with the tendency for gross big negatives. And when development moves into the next stage, it has to capture the enduring positive building blocks of the previous stage and jettison what wasn't working. Because the stage that emerged from that, by and large, was a response to the excesses in the previous stage before. That was the catalytic agent. And it became defined by everything that was wrong with the stage before. And so when modernity unlocked a third perspective, an objective perspective, is I can care about you even if you're in some other country, right? This is where the Declaration of Independence came from, from first from world-centric perspective. Can extend rights to all sentient, well, all humans have inalienable rights. That's a world-centric perspective. And now I can extend the love to you, to Mika, no matter what 
your skin color is. And I can extend love to you even if you're a Buddhist. And I can extend love to you even if you live in another country on the other side of the world. And that's world-centric consciousness.